so we had uh, discussed few concepts on momentum right the wheel stabilization and uh, we will be continuing our discussion with uh, station keeping right the next topic that uh, is there for our discussion so so you can see that you know station keeping is something which is relating to your base station okay. and uh, it makes sure that the satellite is in place in addition to having its attitude control uh, it is important that a pure stationary satellite be kept in a correct orbital slot so what do you mean by orbital slot if in case we have um, this geostationary uh, uh, orbit okay which is about 38000 to 40000 kilometers uh, from the earth's surface right so we should maintain that distance so station keeping is something to deal with all of these uh, uh, parameters which helps in maintaining its position so the equator the equatorial uh, ellipticity of the earth causes the geostationary satellites to drift slowly not only because of the equatorial uh, shape but also because of the atmospheric uh, pressure okay the atmospheric parameters and all of that stuff right okay then one uh, or two stable points okay uh, for example 75 degrees east and 105 degrees west to counter the drift okay so this drift is happening because of the external parameters so in order to counter this okay we use uh, uh, the velocity component is imparted to each satellite just like how you have seen this thrust busters right the thrusters the thrust jets so these thrust jets are activated and once they are active you know you will be able to make sure that it is back in track so the satellite by means of jet which are pulsed once every 2 to 3 weeks so which means the small error the minute error that you see will uh, keep getting accumulated and because of which you know you can uh, see that uh, every every Two or three weeks, so at least fifteen to twenty days. Okay, uh, we will make sure that these uh, jets are activated and slightly they are brought back in place. Okay, this results in the satellite drifting back uh, through its uh, nominal station position, uh, coming to a stop and recommencing the drift along the orbit until the jets are. Pulse once again. So once this happens, okay, we make sure that you know it. We give some time to the satellite okay, to again um, get on track. And once it's on track, okay, um, we wait for another 15-20 uh, days. And once it is done, okay, we will find that these errors will keep accumulating. Once the errors are accumulated. Then we will make sure that you know we rectify it by the use of uh, jets which are activated again. These maneuvers are termed east-west station keeping maneuvers. So, which means um, it is responsible to make sure that you know they are uh, inside the orbit or in the orbit. So, it is not north and south; it is east and west. So, it might go a little left or it might go a little right. So, in order to make sure that we keep them in place, we use this concept called east-west station keeping. Okay. Uh, satellites in the six four gigahertz. Okay, this is uplink and downlink. So, uplink frequency and downlink frequency band must be kept within plus or minus 0.1 degrees of the designated longitude, and in the 14 to 12 gigahertz band. It's about 0 0.05 degrees, so which means uh, a lot of precision is needed with the higher frequency band. And with the lower frequency band, it can have about 0.1 degrees. 
the satellite which is normally geostationary also will uh, drift in latitude so which means just because i have kept them in a geostationary orbit doesn't mean that it will be there uh, in place but we have to make sure that even that is done so the gravitational pull of the sun moon so all these causes an error so how much of error it's about 0.85 degrees per year so there is a deviation or angular change of about 0.85 close to a degree okay close to a degree so every year there will be a degree change so if we do not activate these uh, jets okay if we do not give this pulsated jets then these errors will start getting accumulated drift would result in a cyclic change in the inclination going from 0 to 14.67 degrees in about 26 years okay so we can see approximately about 15 degrees change for about 27 years and so once we activate these jets we make sure that this error whatever error that has been caused due to the gravitational pull uh, gets back to zero so nullifying error is important. To prevent the shift in inclination from exceeding specific uh, times or specific limit times, jets may be pulsed at appropriate time to return the inclination to zero. Yeah, we have seen that. Counteracting jets must be pulsed when the inclination is at zero to halt the change. So jets are used to nullify these errors. These maneuvers are termed north-south station keeping. Okay. And they are much more expensive in fuel than east-west direction. Now, can someone tell me why they are expensive compared to east-west? Why are north-south uh, maneuvering uh, more costlier? Can someone unmute and respond? Why is north-south maneuvering more costlier than east-west maneuvering? Any answers? Hi, Karthik. Can you answer that question? Anybody wants to give me an answer? Okay. So normally what is going to happen is um, because of the centrifugal force, okay, the satellite is already in swing, okay, in swing, which means it is in its orbit. So due to that, since it's already in the swing, the east-west moving it a little bit to the left and right is going to be easier. But then if you have to move it up and down, okay, you'll need extra fuel. That is because you do not have centrifugal force in that direction. So that's the reason for you know having 
uh, less fuel consumed compared to north and south. Okay. The north and south station keeping tolerances are the same as those for east-west station keeping. Uh, here also, we should maintain plus or minus 0.1 degrees in the C band. We will generally be using C band, okay, C band and KV band. So this, these two are the most used bands. Out of these two, KU band is the most used. In our initial classes, we have seen uh, the frequency ranges for uh, different bands. Right? You can refer back to it. Orbital correction is caused out by uh, command from TT and C. So telemetry, tracking, and control. So this is your TT and C telemetry tracking and control, which monitors the satellite position and it makes sure that it's in proper place. So this is a um, uh, pattern okay, that we have seen with regards to Telesat, okay, Telesat, which was actually from, from uh, a Canadian company. Okay. So this is how your satellite motion is, okay? So initially, and then uh, it goes around. So these are because of the errors, right? So we have to just make sure that it is between uh, 0.1 degrees, okay? Just to make sure. And uh, this is taken for a scale of about 50 kilometers, okay? These patterns that you see, okay? So, Keeping it in its orbit is actually very essential because once it goes out of orbit, as you all know what happens, it will actually get into something called graveyard. So we cannot control it. So this figure shows a typical uh, latitude and longitude variations for the Canadian satellite, which remain after station keeping corrections are applied. Okay, so Many of the station keeping corrections, which means the jets were uh, in use. So once we use that, uh, we were able to make sure that it comes back in place less than the error specified. Satellite altitude will also show variations of about 0.1% of the nominal geostationary height. So which means you can find that there could be variations even in the altitude. So what is meant by this altitude? The height. Okay. So as I was mentioning, uh, you know, the distance, it's about 36,000 kilometers, right? So the total variation in the height is about 72 kilometers. So if you take 0.1% of it, okay. uh, so, so 72 kilometers is going to be the variation. So you can understand as to how much of uh, energy is needed to get it back in place. A C band satellite, therefore, uh, can be anywhere within a box bound by this height. Okay, so 72 kilometers is going to be our uh, box. And the tolerance is of about 0.1 degrees in latitude and longitude. So these are nothing but your imaginary lines that are drawn, drawn across our planet. Okay, uh, to have a proper uh, coordinate whenever we launch a satellite. Approximately the geostationary radius, okay, radius is from the center, right, uh, is about 42,164 kilometers. So we will be using this uh, uh, value when we are trying to solve problems also. Okay. So this is a standard value, about 42,164 kilometers. And the angle is uh, 0.2 degree, which uh, subtends an arc of approximately 147 kilometers. So what we are trying to say here is, whenever there is an error of 0.2 degrees, so this distance will actually increase. So first, you know, it will be like this, then slowly it starts coming back in place and then it is proper. So as your degree increases, as your degree of error increases, 
okay the box needed to contain them or the okay, radius is going to extend now this is how you know you can actually visualize uh, here in a rectangular box okay shows the positional limits for a satellite in geostationary orbit in relation to beams from a 30 meter and a 5 meter antenna so suppose i have a big 30 meter antenna so the pattern of signals that will be sent through okay is only this short coverage okay so the coverage of these signals are just going to be very short so if we consider that uh, in a rectangular box as our satellite okay so only this section is going to be covered by uh, a 30 meter beam but if in case we change it to five meters okay so now you can understand the whole box or the whole rectangle is actually covered by our beam so which means we have to opt for values which are lower so as it is lower okay the higher is the coverage okay, it is just like you know your uh, uh, torch okay when you when you on the torch and place it against the wall the, the far you go okay the more the light spreads okay, so which means the coverage becomes higher Assuming 38,000 kilometers typically for a slant range, the diameter of 30 meter beam at the satellite will be diameter is just about 80 kilometers, okay? uh, which does not cover the whole box. Okay, so it can miss out uh, with the remaining sections. But if if the diameter of 5 meter antenna beam, then it is going to cover a drastic 464 kilometers, right? So this kind of coverage is actually needed for us, the highest coverage. So the reason why we want the highest coverage is because we, uh, we can uh, make sure that the satellite is covered completely. So choosing or having the choice of uh, the antenna type is also very important. Right, so the positional uncertainty of the satellite uh, also introduces an uncertainty in propagation time, which can be significant factor in certain types of communication networks. So you should decide on what kind of uh, uh, parameters that you are going to involve so that what kind, what, what is going to be the uh, diameter of your antenna and what is your coverage interest by placing the antenna in an inclined orbit okay, when the orbit is inclined with certain uh, degrees a north south station keeping maneuvers may be dispensed with so if it's an inclined orbit okay which means it is not exactly you know parallel to the uh, orbital plane then we can use the north south station keeping suppose there is zero degree inclination then we can use east west maneuvering okay it is just like you know a straight line uh, if it's a zero degree inclination but it's a slant line when it is a when it's having a non uh, zero inclined orbit okay. so due to which uh, what is going to happen is they have to carry a fuel 
uh, a lot of fuel in order to make sure that these uh, specifications or these requirements are met. Okay. The savings in weight achieved by not having to carry fuel for these maneuvers also allows the communication payload to be increased. So due to which the weight of the payload will also increase because of the fuel. The satellite is placed in an inclined orbit of about 2.5 to 3 degrees in opposite sense uh, to that produced by the drift. So we calculate as to how much drift is going to happen. And accordingly, we make sure that the orbit is inclined. Okay, just about you know two and a half to three degrees. Okay, over a period of about uh, half the predicted lifetime. So, which means you know normally, as I told in, in my previous uh, lectures, your satellites will last for about 15, 20 years, right? So, when when I say half time, so it's probably about seven, eight years. So it's then, you know, things starts getting worse. So when I say still things start getting worse, the errors will increase. Probably the motor windings will, uh, will uh, you know, become uh, malfunctioned. Okay. So, so many other parameters and it's uh, battery capacity also will start decreasing. You can take the example of your cell phone, right? Where initially when you uh, purchase, uh, the backup is good, but then as you keep on using, okay, what happens is, uh, uh, you know, you do not find the same backup as new one, right? Okay. So having a good battery technology here with satellites is a must. We'll change to equatorial and then continue to increase in inclination. So as it keeps becoming old, the the angle of inclination starts increasing and because of which we will need more fuel to actually um, maintain it. So the, the maintenance cost is going to be too high. So sometimes what these engineers will think of is, you know, just to leave that because it's going to cost more to maintain it than the outcome of the satellite. However, this arrangement requires the use of tracking antennas at certain ground stations. So this was about your station keeping. So next we will see something on your um, thermal control. So thermal control is a very important parameter okay, wherein it needs to have proper um, temperature maintained. If not, those components which are inside are going to uh, suffer the thermal outage. Okay. So just have a look at these points mentioned. So satellites are subject to large thermal gradients. This is because, you know, it's out there in the space and uh, it's such a harsh environment where the temperatures can go beyond 150, beyond 200. You know, your boiling point is 100. So it goes beyond boiling points. Receiving sun's radiation on one side while the other side faces into space. Thermal radiation from the Earth and the Earth's albedo, which is the fraction of radiation falling on Earth, which is reflected. Okay. So reflection also causes uh, excess heat and be significant for low altitude Earth orbiting uh, satellites. Sometimes it's also called LEO, low Earth orbiting satellites, LEO, low earth orbiting satellites, although it is negligible for geostationary satellites. So it, it's just like a reflection, you know, the sun's rays falls on the earth and then it's reflected back into the satellite. So that is also one of the thing and the direct sun rays, uh, which actually 
a false in the sample. So it's very significant, you know, to calculate all these values uh, because uh, we have to design our systems in such a way that you know it can withstand this harsh environment. And when the equipment in uh, the satellite also generates heat, which has to be removed. So not only the external heat, but the equipments which are inside will also keep generating this heat. The most important consideration is that satellites equipment should operate as nearly as possible in a stable temperature environment. So we cannot nullify the temperature, right? It's not at all possible. But instead, what we can uh, do is, you know, we can make sure that uh, at least constant temperature is maintained. Okay. The most important uh, consideration is that the satellite's equipment should operate as uh, nearly as possible in a stable environment, stable temperature environment. Now, this is important, right? Having a stable environment uh, will actually help us not only not only thinking of nullifying, but at least maintaining these temperatures. Thermal blankets and shields may be used to provide insulation. So we should make sure that we use uh, blankets, okay, the thermal blankets, which can uh, help us in withstanding the heat and uh, protect the equipment which are inside. So radiation mirrors are often used to remove heat from communications payload. So we have mirrors, okay, which will actually take out the heat, uh, which is generated inside the payload. Okay. The mirror, the uh, thermal radiator uh, for the huge is HS376. Okay, that's an example uh, of a satellite. So these mirror drums surround the communications equipment shelves in each case and provide good radiation paths. So which means whatever radiations are coming inside that is being mirrored outside. Okay, So it is channeled outside. So because of which the heat doesn't get generated internally. One advantage of spinning satellites uh, compared with body stabilized, stabilized is that the spinning body provides an averaging of the temperature extremes experienced from solar flux and cold background of deep space. Okay, so there is a mix of environment here. Okay, the sun's heat and the space, which is actually and of cold. Right. So our devices that we have, the sensors that we have developed should actually withstand these harsh environments. In order to maintain constant temperature conditions, heaters may be switched on. Okay, when it's too cold, we will have heaters there. Okay, so I can send a command from the ground station to turn on the heater in the satellite. Okay. To make up for the heat uh, reduction, which occurs when transponders are switched off. Okay. So all these, uh, you know, are actually very important uh, concepts, uh, which is necessary for us to understand and uh, build and design the satellite. So the next one that you will be looking into is uh, PTNC okay, exclusively. Uh, this is a huge uh, uh, topic where, you know, this is your diagram okay, of the control system, the entire control system, where you have 
uh, telemetry and tracking command facilities. Then you have uh, the telecast stations. Then you have the range data communications uh, analysis center, satellite control center, computer center. All these are connected. See, building and launching and maintaining a satellite is a huge task. Okay, so, you know, it's uh, it's it's up to the designer as to how long he wants the satellite to be used and what is the purpose if it's going to be for high-end purposes then of course the uh, you know the sensors the elements that are used to build it will be of high grade okay. so we need uh, an analysis center okay we need a computer center we need data communications okay that happens and uh, this is an example of the telesat uh, the canadian satellite okay where they had in different uh, places for example tt uh, ac station was at uh, ontario then uh, you know they had placed it there that's what they are trying to say and the station uh, east hemisphere okay which is used for transfer objects only okay so so a lot of uh, information a lot of processing a lot of analysis is done The TTNC uh, subsystem, which is tracking, uh, telemetry, and command subsystem, performs several routine functions uh, aboard the spacecraft. So there are a lot of functionalities that happens actually. The telemetry or telemetry okay, function uh, could be interpreted as a measurement of distance. Specifically, it refers to the overall operation of generating an electrical signal, which is proportional to the quantity being measured and encoding and transmitting this to a distant station. So not only you know transmitting information, but making sure that these signals are encoded and sent to the proper sensor. Data which is transmitted as telemetry signals include attitude information such as uh, that which is obtained from sun or earth sensor right so here uh, how do we get this data we get this data by the sensors which is used right it will make sure that uh, uh, it is the center of the earth is taken into consideration and then the distance is calculated and accordingly once we get the data we will make sure that it's all in this by using the jets. Environment information such as magnetic field intensity and detection, the frequency of uh, meteor impact, uh, and so on. So many, there are many things to be considered here, right? As to you know, based on the magnetic field. So many times, what is going to happen is. You will, you will find that uh, this magnetic field is not uh, you know stable it keeps way it, it keeps uh, you know changing so which means i cannot actually assume uh, as to what is going to be my field intensity so when i'm designing my system i will just make sure that uh, you know it is built for the worst okay so that it can sustain all such things Right. The spacecraft information such as temperature, power supply, and stored fuel pressure. Okay. So, so how much of pressure is there inside? Uh, what is the level of fuel? These days, you know, you, with this automation in place, you have a lot of um, information. Okay. That is actually on a dashboard in many of the cars. So, just imagine the amount of information that will be available, uh, or you know, to be analyzed with a satellite. Certain frequencies have been designated by international agreement for satellite telemetry transmission, just like how we have uh, signals for uh, the frequencies meant exclusively for Bluetooth, right? So we have certain spectrum allocated for the communication with satellite. So that is exclusively meant for uh, telemetry purpose. 
So telemetry uh, signals are actually used for keeping this in place. During the transfer and drift orbital phases of uh, satellite launch, a special channel is used, the omnidirectional antenna. So we use antennas, we use dipole antennas. So based on our requirement, okay, uh, we, we make sure as to what type of antennas are needed. So based on the application. Once the satellite is on station, one of the normal communications transponder may be used with its directional antenna. Now here we call it a transponder because it, it can transfer and it can also receive, transmit and receive information. And then we get this information back uh, to a special channel during the transfer orbit. 